Well, Noir Vember continues, and today I'm going to take a look at the film Gilda from 1946, starring the gorgeous Rita Hayworth with Glenn Ford and George McReady. It is a noir classic, features romance, betrayal, gambling, a few Nazis, and of course, those very memorable musical numbers from Gilda. It's a great film, and like always on this channel, I'm going to try my best to do it justice with this review. As far as the story goes, the film opens up with Glenn Ford's character, Johnny. He's in Buenos Aires. He's playing dice in a back alleyway somewhere, and he's doing this voiceover to kind of give us a little bit of exposition to help us along. He leaves with a bunch of winnings, and he's about to be robbed when a mysterious, well-dressed stranger saves his life. And he's got this cool cane, too, with like a knife at the end. Well, he gives Johnny a tip about a casino across town. But if he goes, remember to wear a tie. Well, Johnny heads out to play blackjack at this new club, and he's making a bunch of money. He's doing really good, a little too good, as a couple of thugs grab him and bring him to see the boss. And you know, I've watched De Niro in Casino, and I know these kind of things don't usually go very well. Well, it turns out that the boss guy is the well-dressed man he met before, character Balan Munson, who's played by actor George McReady. And Balan basically wants Johnny out of there. And he doesn't even break his hand or anything, but Johnny persuades him to hire him. But Balan, master of the foreshadow, asks him, There's no woman anywhere, is there? And Johnny assures him that there isn't. Hmm. Oh, and Johnny also smacks down one of the thugs, who incidentally was played by Joe Sawyer, as a character actor I've seen in a number of these old crime films. So kind of neat to see him there. Well, Johnny gets the job, and... Apparently he's been at the job for a while, because in a voiceover he lets us know that World War II is now over. Balan takes a trip and leaves Johnny in charge, but when he returns later, he seems to be much happier to Johnny, and soon enough we find out why. He's now married to the character Gilda, played by the gorgeous Rita Hayworth. And what an introduction. Her first scene is that classic scene of tossing her hair back. Me? And Johnny's reaction tells us quite a lot. And I love the sultry expressions of Rita Hayworth in this scene as she sizes up Johnny. And, you know, from her dialogue and body language, we get the impression at this point, she doesn't like him. Do they know one another? Well, Balan kind of picks up on this vibe as well. So around this time, Johnny spots this little guy earning a lot of money at the roulette wheel suspiciously. And he finds out that this is probably Balan's form of bribery to allow the casino to continue to operate in a place where it's generally illegal. So Balan wants to have dinner with Gilda and has Johnny go and get her. And there's all this lively teasing dialogue from her. And later she does deny to Balan that she knew Johnny before, but he doesn't seem to believe it nor do we, the viewer. Then he goes off on this weird dialogue about how hate can be a very exciting emotion. Yeah, that's a little weird there, Balan. Well, anyhow, the next day, that little man is back again. He's looking for another bribe at the relay table, but he's turned down and he seeks out Balan. And it sounds like they have this business deal that's been going on that goes sour. Gilda, meanwhile, is off playfully dancing with another fellow. Now, Johnny tries to cover for her, but there's a gunshot, and it's the little fellow from before, and he has been trying to shoot and kill Balan. There's some chaos, people scream and flee, and the little guy runs to the washroom and shoots himself. I mean, off screen, of course, it's 1946. Balan is, of course, shaken up and gives Johnny some background on the cartel that he runs, and he entrusts Johnny with the combination to a safe. Well, later that night, Gilda comes home with another young guy and Johnny tells him to scram. And when he doesn't, he belts him. And once the guy splits, he tells Gilda to you know, make excuses, but she seems to be fearless here with her indiscretions. Now, a different night, Johnny wakes up. He hears the sound of Gilda singing in the casino room. The only one there is this little servant guy Pio, played by Stephen Garay, and he's there just listening to her sing away. And Johnny brings her back, and Balan seems to see through things. And I love how the scene closes on Balan's face in the shadows. Well, it's another night, and now it's carnival night at the casino, and there's lots of celebrating and music. However, soon a man is discovered dead, and there's commotion and screaming and so on. 
Johnny finds Valen in his office and warns him of the trouble. But Valen only tells him, hey, go find Gilda, bring her home. And he does so, but oh, that sultry, seductress Gilda, whispering in the quiet about how there's no one else there, it's just the two of them. Mm. And they finally embrace in passion. But it's around that time that they hear a noise downstairs. And Johnny goes to look and he sees that it's Balin, and now he's on the run. Well, Johnny hops in his car in pursuit, and behind him, and there's a detective following as well. They get to a small airstrip, and they see him hop in a plane and fly out to sea. But his plane appears to crash and explode. But out in the water, we, the viewers, see that this clever old Balin character is faking his death here. Hmm. Well, meanwhile, according to Balin's will, Johnny has taken over at the club. And before you know it, he's getting married to Gilda. What? But almost immediately after they get married, Johnny seems to become this obsessively controlling jerk. Basically not wanting her to see anyone, he's not even living with her. He's basically punishing her for her cheating ways with this weird obsessive controlling. Well, Gilda won't stand for it. She starts seeing other men, but Johnny just has them beaten up and sent away. So she takes off and leaves. She goes to Monte Deveo and does a wonderful musical number out there and hooks up with Tom, this lawyer guy who seems to fancy her. And he persuades her to go back to Buenos Aires to get an annulment of their marriage. But when they return to Buenos Aires, it turns out that this Tom character is on Johnny's payroll. Wow, surprise, and Gilda is back in her cage. Oh man, that's low. So Johnny has really become this obsessive control freak. And Gilda, however, is soon off to do a sultry musical number at the club. This is the famous put the blame on Mame boys number. And I just gotta say, Rita Hayworth is fantastic here in this scene, but Johnny won't have it. And he pulls her aside and slaps her down. Shame on you, Johnny. Now it's around this time that the police investigator, he's starting to look more closely into the goings on at this casino with Johnny. And it's not just for this casino operation, but because of the suspicion that maybe Johnny's involved in bigger crimes here. Now with not much of the film left, how will things end? Will it be curtains for Johnny? Is there any hope for his troubled relationship with Gilda? Well, you gotta watch the end of this one for yourself to find out. So some quick closing thoughts. This was a great film, and I really enjoyed the performances of both Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford here. And you know, Rita Hayworth is really something in this film. I mean, her character is bold, brash, headstrong, and at the same time, she is that epitome of Hollywood glamour from the 1940s. You know, where did that era of glamorous stars like this vanish to? I'm not going to spend my time complaining about films of today. I'm only going to say this. This era seems to have just vanished from history. Actresses like this were strong and captivating yet with grace, charm, and beauty. They just don't seem to exist anymore. I mean, the same goes for the era of the Cary Grant style actors. You know what I mean? The, the performers who were clever, charming, and witty that didn't have to fling out profanities constantly. You know, that type of thing. I was just watching another film recently. It was talking about how we are in a time frame where people are walking away from being steadfast moviegoers. You know, people that just go to the cinema all the time to catch a new film. And I understand why. When you really start delving into the riches of what made these old films so good, there's just nothing today that can compare. All right, I need to get back off of my soapbox and back into the review. I will say this about the film Gilda, is that if you watch it, you watch it for those noir elements, the filmmaking and the performances, more so than the story. I gotta admit, that's probably the weakest element of the film. A lot of the times I either, I couldn't follow what was going on or why there felt like there was this weird shift in the character of Glenn Ford. He starts the film off and it's sort of his voiceover narration. He's kind of doing the William Holden Sunset Boulevard voiceover thing. But then at some point in the film, there's this twist and the narrative seems to be driven more around Gilda's character because Johnny has become this obsessive controlling person. In fact, his narrative seems to completely vanish from the film. And that subplot with the Balan character just seemed kind of vague. 
you know, wondering what really was the deal with him faking his death? Why did he do it? And so on. So Johnny, Ford's character, he just going through that dark, controlling power trip transformation, it just started to feel completely off. It kind of threw the film for me. Maybe I'm alone on that, but that was sort of my perception of the story. It just, it seemed wildly inconsistent. So again, I guess, don't go reading into the story too much, but just savor the performances here, particularly those musical numbers. And speaking of which, there is a rumor that in this film, this is the only time you actually hear Rita Hayworth's real singing voice, but in researching, that's actually not the case. Rita actually never recorded her own voice singing, and it was just talented lip syncing. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, Anita Ellis actually dubbed most of her singing through the film. It is very convincing, though. And you know, as I started to research this film more, there was a boatload of trivia out there. And there's just so much written on this film, I don't even know where to begin. I put a whole bunch of the links below in the description. One amusing tidbit I read was that in 1946, atomic scientists on the Bikini Atoll named the first atomic bomb to be detonated during peacetime with Gilda and they painted Rita's picture on it. <laughs> and uh, Orson Welles, who was her husband at the time, wasn't too thrilled with this idea. <laughs> I love it. So that's my review of Gilda from 1946. It's an enjoyable bit of film noir with Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford. It can be a bit melodramatic at time and the story a little bit convoluted, but watch it for those amazing performances and the dancing and the singing of Rita Hayworth it makes this film worth watching. You know, my words just can't really do a description. You gotta really just watch this one for yourself. It is a great film. It's worth checking out.